Today on Ham Radio Q&A, I take apart my portable operation kit. So please keep watching for a full rundown of everything I bring into the field. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, every time I do a portable activation or a parks on the air type video, I always get a lot of questions about, um, you know, what I'm using for gear, uh, for the radio transceiver, for antennas, uh, for power, uh, things like that. And um, it's been about a, a little over a year since the last time I did a, um, a breakdown a video of all of the gear that I carry. So I thought, you know, maybe it's time again to pull out the bags and uh, show you, you know, what uh, everything I've, I've I bring into the field. And especially since the last time I did that video, I've done a little bit of streamlining and changing things up a little bit. So uh, this is the latest for 2020 on what I'm carrying out in the field when I do a portable activation. Uh, to start things off, I've got three bags, uh, basically the transceiver bag. This has got the radio, the tuner, and, and other accessories in it. Uh, the antenna bag, uh, this has got um, antenna, cables, connectors, uh, things of that nat nature. And then also some of the miscellaneous pouches. Um, I'll organize some um, smaller items in, little, in smaller pouches to um, kind of uh, sort of grab and go because I like a modular approach of picking and choosing what, a, what particular equipment I'm going to take. I don't like to take everything, but instead, you know, pick and choose, you know, based on the type of activation I'm going to do. So to start things off, uh, we're going to go into the transceiver bag. And this is a standard um, military style sling pack. I've got links to all of these products in the video description below uh, if you're interested in any of them. And um, I know some people like to use hard cases for everything. I prefer the soft cases. I find that they're a little bit more convenient to tote around. Uh, they're smaller, they're lighter weight, they're um, easy, a little bit easier to pack than hard cases do. But you know, the type of case you choose is really dependent upon, you know, what your your personal needs, wants, and desires are. So if you like the hard cases and you find that works better for your situation, go ahead with those. But um, I've always been sort of the soft case per kind of person. So to open it up, we're gonna go into the meat of the things with the, with the center pocket. Uh, because, you know, everything is kind of based around that is the transceiver. And uh, for transceivers, I'm using the um, Yesu FT891 HF transceiver. Uh, I've been using this for about, uh, I've had this for almost almost two years now. Uh, really, really like it a lot. Uh, 100 watts out on HF plus 6 meters. Uh, you can dial it down to 5 watts if you want to do QRP. It's... Um, Pretty, it's, it's reasonably lightweight, it's got a nice small form factor, works really well out in the field, and I enjoy using this a lot. Um, I protect it by using a um, foam wrap. It's got a foam sort of on the outside. It's got um, nylon on the inside with Velcro on it. Uh, this particular wrap, I think is made by uh, Domke, and um, fits the transceiver quite well, so slides right in like that and I can I can keep it protected inside the bag. Uh, next up is the um, tuner and um, I used to carry a manual tuner with me and there's a little bit of work uh, involved with using a manual tuner and uh, this year I switched to an auto tuner and currently I'm using the LDG uh, Z11 Pro 2. Uh, this is this will tune 125 watts on sideband and I think it'll do 100 watts on uh, the digital modes. Uh, don't quote me on that, um, but um, works really well. I usually don't go more than 40, 40, 50 watts digital with this transceiver anyway. So uh, this this tuner um, certainly fulfills fulfills my needs. And I got another um, for, uh, padded wrap that I keep that covered too to protect it. And then one more item of importance in here is my antenna analyzer. And I used to carry, I've got a, I've got a few antenna analyzers, and I used to carry the um, Rig Experts um, AA600, which is my main analyzer, goes up to 600 megahertz. And it's the one I use for a lot of my business stuff. But um, I found that, um, you know, it's, it's big, and I really don't want to take that one everywhere. I want something that's a little bit smaller and a little bit more convenient. So I've switched to the Rig Experts stick, 
Uh, this one goes up to 230 megahertz. It's small, it's pretty convenient. Um, it's not the cheapest thing out there, but it's still cheaper than my AA600, so uh, that, makes, that makes me feel a little bit better. Um, I could go with a, you know, something like a nano VNA or one of those small VNA type and, uh, tuners, but I wanted, instead of going with that, I wanted something that was a little bit more um, rugged, a little bit more finished in its appearance and operation than a nano VNA is. And um, that's why I kind of chose this. And we'll, I'll be coming up with a product review of this, of this tuner or this analyzer um, in a future video. So um, you'll see up here in the corner here when that video is ready to go. Uh, and that's pretty much in the main pocket. The only other thing I have in here is, because um, there's a small side pocket, would be a pair of headphones. Uh, these are little, uh, just portable fold-up headphones. Uh, the speaker on the 891 is not the best, so headphones is a great thing to carry when you are out in the field, especially if you don't want to, you know, you want to do some early morning operation and you don't want to disturb people. <clears throat> So let's move out into the other pockets. I have organized in here um, power cables and I carry the rig power cable. We got power pole connectors on that. I also have a couple other cables, um, one with um, just ring connectors if I need to connect it to an external battery. I've got another cable with a um, cigarette lighter on it and, um, and power poles if I need to connect to an accessory plug in say like a power pack or in a vehicle or something like that. So I've got some, a little bit of adaptability there in my cable, in my um, power connector pouch. Moving on, and um, in the top pouch is where I carry all the little bitty odds and ends. And in here you'll find stuff like um, connectors. I've got, um, a few adapters, BNC adapters, uh, lots of uh, barrel connectors. I, got, I usually carry about four or five of these so I can um, build out lengths of coax. Usually when I, for my field stuff, I'll carry short 25 foot chunks of coax. So if I need to put two together, um, barrel connectors are essential. And you know, make sure you have like about a half a dozen of those because invariably you're gonna lose them. Uh, Patch cable uh, to connect the tuner to the uh, transceiver. I carry two, just in case. I have a um, nine volt uh, battery with a little 2.5 millimeter plug on it. This is for the tuner. The tuner requires its own power source. Uh, you can plug it into your battery if you want uh, for external power, or there's a double A pack that goes inside the tuner. But I found that this is a little bit more convenient. I just, I don't like those double A battery sloshing around inside the tuner in a, in a, field, in a, in a field item. So um, I just plug a little nine volt battery into the power port. That yeah, works great. Uh, spare pens, uh, note paper. I've got like three or four pens here. I never have too many of those. I got a little box with fuses in here and there's a variety of fuses, blade fuses for the um, radio, for the transceiver power cable, uh, little um, uh, glass fuses for um, other devices. Um, look at, when you, when you put your portable kit together, look at the types of fuses that your, your, po for your, your power requirements are. And uh, make sure you care, just carry plenty of fuses in the proper amperage. Um, and have you know more than what you would need. So we've I've got at least four of each. Um, so you're ready for anything that may uh, stop you power wise. Uh, moving on to the antenna pack. Um, this is a bag that um, the Chameleon M Pass Two came with. It's an okay bag. I've had it for about a year now. Uh, two of the zippers have broke on it. So. Um, I'm gonna replace this bag with probably something like this. If I can find another one of these sling bags in a different color, um, then I can color code my transceiver and color code my antennas. But um, working with this, um, antenna wise, like I said, this came, this uh, um, was from Chameleon. So I carry the Chameleon m 2 uh, portable antenna kit. And uh, the m is really nice because it's super versatile. Uh, you've got the, um, Mill whip in here, uh, the ground spike, two of the um, uh, the 
short, you know, the shorter 26 foot counterpoise, the 64 foot um, main element, um, and that's all part of the that's all part of the chameleon setup there. Um, they've, they also get a, um, a clamp mount here, uh, so you can you can set it up on a picnic table or something like that. Um, and then also there's enough room in here in that I can also carry my second vertical antenna, and that's the Wolf River Coil uh, Silver Bullet oh, 1000 that fits in here. I also have a clamp mount for that. I usually use the clamp mount and either um, clamp this to one of the um, to the uh, ground spike or you can clamp it to a picnic table or you can clamp it to something else. I have three of these um, ground, what, ground radials that I've, I've put together myself. This is approximately 33 feet long on a kite string winder. There's a, a little alligator clip on the end and I, I'll put out two or maybe three of those uh, when I set up the uh, Silver Bullet 1000. In uh, the pockets here, moving along, I carry um, electrical tape, um, ox guard. This is a really handy um, little substance. I put these, you know, when I screw an antenna together, be it the, the, the Wolf River coil or the impasse, um, put a little bit of this ox guard on the threads and um, it will keep them from seizing up, give you a little bit better electrical connection. Um, the impasse comes with a couple Allen wrenches, so make sure you've got yourself an Allen wrench kit, uh, miscellaneous hardware, and then my um, line thrower. Uh, this is the um, 12 ounce Weaver Leather Company uh, Arborist throw bag, and um, you can use this to get up into the, you can get a line up in the trees 30, 40 feet, uh, depending how good of a throw you can do. So an um, essential piece of equipment in the antenna bag. Otherwise, moving along, I do carry a few pieces of rope with me. Um, this paracord, about, I think these are about 30 foot, 40 foot pieces. Um, I found that the 30 feet's a little bit short and um, I've got more rope in my rope bag, several pieces of paracord that are about 50 feet long each. Uh, 50 feet is a good, good length for putting up a wire antenna. Also carry a um, crescent wrench. Uh, I found this invaluable in uh, taking apart the um, impasse because sometimes those fittings are a little bit tough to get um, loosened up with just your fingers. So the crescent wrench is, is helpful. Um, uh, let's see, middle part, part, this is where the zipper is broken. I've got two pieces of coax in here. I've got a 50 foot piece of coax that comes with the impasse, and then another 25 foot piece of coax that comes with the, um, or that doesn't come with the impasse, but I use that for the Wolf River coil. So, and like I said, the zipper is busted on this, so this bag is going to get replaced uh, very soon. Moving on, um, a couple um, other items that um, they don't fit in the bag, but um, the mill whip extension and the um, collapsible whip. This is the MFJ 1979 whip. It's, I think it's 17 feet long. Um, and I use this for the uh, Silver Bullet 1000. And then finally, uh, power. Everybody asks, what do you use for power? Well, I've usually got two power sources. If I'm portable, portable, I've got this little um, 12 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, this is the, the Talon Cell um, 12 amp hour battery. I reviewed this last year. Uh, works really well. I can run, you know, I, I, use, I gotta dial the transceiver down to 50 watts, but um, this will run it for a few hours in the field, no problem. This is a, just a padded bag that I salvaged years ago. If anybody recognizes this logo here, you'll probably know where I got that bag from. Uh, rope bag. Several pieces of, of rope. 50-foot uh, lengths, I find, are the best for um, launching an antenna in the air. So I've got fifth, several 50-foot pieces of rope. Uh, these bags, these are organizer cubes. You can get these off of Amazon, other online sources. Uh, I found these really handy in organizing things. And then I've also got another coax bag. There's a couple more 25 foot runs of coax in here. So I can, I've got spare coax that's organized, rope that's organized. Uh, 
power antennas, and then finally the transceiver kit. And that all is uh, everything that I've got out in the field um, for a, a super easy um, activation. Like I said, everything is packed up and ready to go, so I can just um, grab these two bags, grab the power and the whip, and uh, throw it all in the trunk of the car, and I'm out in 10 minutes flat. As a bonus, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what table I use. If you've seen some, some of my Parks on the Air videos, you see that the radio is sitting on a little table uh, next to the camper, and this is what it is. It's um, GCI Outdoors. This is a folding aluminum table, so it, it comes folds out, real, folds out real easy. Uh, telescoping legs, and then just put the two pieces together. A good sturdy table, and to cover it, We've got this nifty little um, weaving that my wife made. Uh, she sells these on her website. So I'll put a link to that in the video description below if you're looking for something custom made table coverings for your little portable camping table. Well, that's it for my um, portable operations kit. Uh, there, is there anything that I missed? Uh, anything that you find that's really handy for your portable operations? Please leave them in the comments below. I'd like to see what other people are doing. And for more articles and information, as always, you can check out my blog at www.jpaul-antenna.com. Support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up. Uh, you check out some of the other recommended videos and don't forget to hit the subscribe. Pressing subscribe and the little bell notification will inform you when a future video is released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.